Hello guys and welcome back. So this is going to be part 5 of the series of making my Ashmane cosplay, a War World of Warcraft cosplay. Um, I know this is a longer video being about 20 minutes than I usually do, but I wanted to get all of this in one video. This is just making the skirt from start to finish. So I wanted to do it all in one video. I didn't really want to break this part up. Um, so as you can see here, I am tracing out my pattern. So I made my pattern of some leftover felt I had. Um, and just kind of cut out pieces and pinned it to my mannequin until I got to be about the right size. Um, for the skirt, I was inspired by Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, many of Alloy's skirts are kind of the sh three panel shape I'm going for here. So that's why I decided to do. Now I'm not leaving any seam allowance because I'm going to be sewing right on my edges. Um, that's because <clears throat> we're going to be working with fur and that's how I prefer to sew with fur. So right now what I'm cutting out is the flannel, which is the backing of my skirt, and then the front's going to be a black fake leather and black fake fur, because I can't um, uh, iron fur, I did go ahead and iron my flannel before I got to sewing. So now I'm cutting out the um, leather pieces. And this is a very fast uh, video as well, so I'm trying to keep up here. But I did um, mark out my pattern and trim around the edges because I wanted the center of the panels to be leather and the outer edges to be fur. That's sort of how some of the ally skirts are. Not all of them, not quite even, but sort of. You'll see when we're at the end and what this looks like. So here I am working on my fake fur. Um, I use a few different methods for cutting it out and such and cleaning up, you'll see. I'm using a metallic sharpie to trace out my pattern just so you can see because we're working on black so you can see here I'm using scissors and when I'm doing that other panel I end up using um, a box cutter you can do either you just have to be very careful that you don't cut those fibers um, and so the fruit there's three panels the two front ones are exactly the same just flip-flopped so I don't really do any sewing or anything like that in this video of the second panel since it's exactly the same I went ahead and left that out just to make this video a little bit shorter since I'd just be doing the same thing over and over. So yeah, here I'm going to be pinning together my fake fur and fake leather. I'm going to sew that together and then we'll pin on our flannel which will be our backing and sew that. <clears throat> it does take a minute here to get that all pinned. I'm just using the little like uh, quilting clips. I prefer those over needles in general and that since and since I'm using a fake leather, I don't want to poke holes in it with pins. And I feel like it's easier for anyway to use clips. So yeah, here I am sewing it on. I'm using a zigzag stitch. And I'm right up against the edge, so I don't really have any bulk in that seam. Pretty much lays flat when I'm done. I am using a heavy-duty needle, since I'm working with the fake leather and fur. So it can be a little rough on the machine, so... Um, I don't want to use like a regular old needle. I typically use ballpoints since I mostly use fleece, but for this ballpoint wasn't enough. You can end up with bent or break, broken needles that way. And also, excuse my voice, I'm still getting over the sinus infection. I'm feeling better, but my voice isn't quite uh, back to how it should be, back to normal. Okay, so here I'm pinning on the flannel. I'm tucking in all the fur while I'm at it because I don't want to get any fur stuck in the seams. And then once I sew this together, um, I will leave a little gap so I can turn it right side out, and then I will go over just that little gap to close it up. And then this one panel will be finished. And I do the same exact thing for the other front panel. So I don't show that, but I do show how I do the back panel. So here I am sewing that front panel. So the fr main, all, all parts will be together, for this panel anyway. Let's take a minute. I think I had to go back and um, yeah, here you can see these random clips I'm putting back. It's where I missed getting the flannel and fur sewed together. So I had to go back over those areas. So I was marking them with my clips so I'd know to go back. And there I am uh, hitting those spots again that didn't quite get caught with the thread the first time. 
So now I'm just painting on the mannequin to make sure it's lining up everywhere. And here you can see I have the second front panel done as well. It's just a reverse of the same exact one. Nothing, the separate panels aren't sewn together here. They're just pinned to my mannequin. And you can see my uh, back panel pattern made out of felt in the background there. This is a quick close up to see how this is looking. Okay, so now we're going to be working on the back panel. <clears throat> so starting with the flannel again. This will be the backing, just the same as the front. Um, and it will have a fur trimmed leather front, like the front pieces did. And once again, I'm not leaving any seam allowance. I'm going right, cutting right onto that pattern. Ironing again to get those creases out before I get to sewing materials that can't be ironed. So here I'm marking out where it's going to be fur and where it's going to be leather for this panel, since I, I had already done that for my front panels, but not the back panel. So I'm just doing that real quick, and now I'm going to cut it out. So that middle piece, once again, is going to be leather, and the outer outline is going to be fur. Trace the pattern, cut it out right on there. Um, sometimes I do use a straight edge or a roller yardstick whenever I'm cutting just to make it a little quicker. And back to the fur again. I do have a giant amount of fur, so it's very awkward. It wouldn't stay on the table. I had to actually drape a bunch of it over the table onto a chair so it'd stay in place. So once again, I'm using a metallic sharpie so I can see what I'm doing. And I am using a box cutter to cut it out. Very gently. I do have to go in a few corners of scissors just to get them... Uh, get those points right. And then to clean up the fur, I either go over with tape, which I think I'm doing right here, or I take a vacuum hose. I did both when doing these, um, just to get that fur off there. Here I'm going over with tape again, and I think I came back with the vacuum, but I guess I didn't do that on the camera. And I'm cutting out that center piece. That will just go into a scrap pile. I don't need that center piece at all, but it's a big enough piece I could probably use it for something later. Then, as I did before, I'm putting that fake leather and fake fur together for that panel, the back panel. We're going to sew that, and then we'll pin on our flannel that will be the back end. We'll sew that together, turn the right side out, and we'll get to putting things together. So here we are sewing that fur and leather together for the back panel. <coughs> And I'm going to pin on that flannel. So once I get this panel done, uh, we'll see how it's looking on the mannequin, and we'll be able to sew the front panels onto the back panel, make them connected, and I'm not going to sew the front two panels together. Instead, I'm going to add snaps for a closure to put it on and off, take it on and off, and I'll show that as well. So you do want to make sure you get all those little fur fibers tucked in real good, otherwise it's going to get caught in the seam and it will be noticeable whenever you turn it right side out. I am finding spots I missed again. That does happen, you just hit them again and you won't be able to tell. I think I have it turned right side out now, and I'm just hitting that little opening I had left open to turn it right side out. And you can't see this when I'm done. So here I am pinning it on to make sure everything's lined up right, and to see just where everything needs to get sewn together, since the corners are overlapping to be sewn. So here's my pattern from the felt to help me get things lined up. As you can see, the front panels will overlap the back panel. Get sewn on like that, and I do sew it by hand because we're working with fur here. Um, if we ever ran over a machine, then it would have most likely um, sewn down a lot of those fur fibers, and it would have been very noticeable where the seams are. So I just um, <clears throat> I'm just using a needle and hand sewing it. And I go all around that little triangle shape where those panels connect. I do kind of go down the line as well a little bit, just because I want to make sure my hips are mostly covered 
and that the uh, skirt won't part too far up. Not that it really matters since I will be wearing a bodysuit under this, but I just want it to lay a certain way, so that's what I'm making sure it happens. And this takes a while since it's hand sewing. And I tried to keep it on camera the best I could, but it's just one of those things. And the fake fur and fake leather are both from fabric.com, and the black flannel is from Joanne Fabrics. I'll have links for both in the description below. Here I got a little better camera angle on sewing the other side one. <clears throat> Just a very repetitive thing. This also has a decent amount of weight, which is why it's kind of shifting a lot. I mean, for fake leather and flannel, it's... I'm actually weighted, but I'd say that weighs probably a couple pounds, even. Two pounds, at least. Though it doesn't feel heavy on me, but we're going to fit on the table. So here everything is sewn together. Now we just got to add the snaps to this. I'm just kind of showing... Um, because it is fur, you can't really see the overlap like I had originally planned. Whereas if I've used, you know, even if just fleece or some other fabric like that, you would have seen how I had it uh, overlap. But that doesn't matter too much. So here I'm doing um, sew on snaps. At the end of this, I actually took off two of those and replaced them with utility snaps because the sew on snaps weren't strong enough. But I didn't leave these top two sew on snaps because they were fine. Um, and I hand sewn a couple of them on just because of that fur again, but then I got tired of it and I switched to the machine, so you'll see that later. <clears throat> um, for the utility snaps, I don't remember if I popped it on camera, but we'll find out here later. Um, I attached the utility snaps to scrap pieces of flannel, attached them with a machine I have, or a table press, and then I hand sewed them, the flannel onto the other flannel. Yeah, here I had given up and I'm machine sewing my snaps on. I just made sure I parted the fa uh, the fleece properly to keep as much of that fur from getting stuck down as I could. I did have to brush out a few areas, um, but it worked out well. You can't really see where I did that. I'm just using your regular old button foot. I did have to set it to the widest setting. And even then, um, it was almost not wide enough, so I had to be very careful. I had the machine running at a slower speed, just because if you hit that metal with the needle, you're going to either break it or bend it, so I was trying okay, to avoid so that. The skirt is ready now. Um, I have both the front panels put together and that back panel. Um, they are sewn together and sewed them on the sides here, the front to the back panel on both sides. It's over here. And then the front has four snaps. I might have to add a third snap because um, down here where it's pulling more, it's um, that bottom snap is wanting to come undone. So I might have to add a fifth snap. And on my mannequin, um, I can't actually snap the bottom, but when I'm wearing it, I can. So I'll show that. So I just have the little sew on snaps on here. see on this side a little better and I have two for the top and then two that go down just because I want to keep the front together a little bit um, and then these kind of get hidden in the fur a little bit which is okay I might have to trim the fur a little bit I'm trying to avoid that right now uh, and when I'm putting it on I start from that inside corner here That's easier to do when I'm wearing it. Maybe I'll do that here in a second. And then I do the other top one. And then I find my little front snaps here. And I make sure I get as much of the fur away as I can because I did notice um, if the fur gets in the way, then they don't snap. 
I think I can snap this one. It just bunches it up weird on the mannequin, but it doesn't do that when I'm wearing it. So you can't see the not hidden. Um, I did have this one right here ended up being on the leather, well, fake leather, um, but the fur does cover it, and I will be making a belt out of brown fake leather that's going to match my bag, so my bags will hang off of. That's going to wrap around here, so it should hide it pretty well. Um, and I might add more snaps on here for the belt to snap on too, just because I'm the bags that are going to hang off it are going to be usable and going to have stuff in them, including things like my phone, my glasses, uh, if I carry my cards or ID or something, what happened in there? So I want to make sure that's going to hold up and not slide around on me all the time. So yeah, I'm going to try this on on myself now. So we'll do that. And I am still sick. I have a lot of downtime though since I'm sick, so working on this. So I'm wearing a lot of layers right now just because this is the, uh, um, not when this video is being recorded, but, or when it's being recorded, not when it's uploaded, but right now we're having that ar arctic front where it's like four degrees where I'm at, but in other places it's like negative 27, I guess. So I'm wearing a lot of layers, but whenever I have my actual costume, I'm just going to be wearing a thin bodysuit, like a kind of like a zentai suit or my diva suit, just a skin tight uh, spandex basically. So not a sweater and cami and all these other layers I'm wearing. So I'll make it fit a little better too. So it is a tiny, tiny smidge tight right now, but not much. Not enough that's uncomfortable. I did walk around with this one and it was fine. So yeah, just like on the mannequin, I do this top two, then this middle one, then the bottom one. Wish that bottom one doesn't always want to snap. I got the fur suit on there a little weird, which is why I think I'm going to add a fifth snap in that area. So yeah, let's adjust this. Yeah, so it's not like a real solid thing, but like I said, I'm wearing a bodysuit underneath it, so it doesn't really matter because it all can do every which way, but at the same time, I have full movement. Unlike some of my other cosplays I've done, where I have very limited, I can move my arms a certain way, or my legs a certain way, I can crouch or do whatever I want, other than this one snap, just unsnap. So, I am going to think, I think I'm going to have to add a fifth snap down here, or a different snap. Because it just isn't, I think it might just be that snap's not very good. But yeah, so it has fake leather in the middle of all these panels, all are trimmed in about... Um, a one and a half inch wide area of fur. The fake fur is about a one inch pile. And then everything is lined in flannel. So it'll definitely be a warm costume. Um, yeah. So yeah. This is part five of this video series. Thank you so much for watching. In part six, I'm going to be working on the belt that goes around this. And these little bags I only made the one small one so far. I do have to add a little decorative details still, but yeah, we're gonna be making these guys next. So yeah, look forward to that, and then we will probably get back to the armor after this because I haven't decided what I'm doing for the chest for sure. I might be sewing or I might be doing regular armor. Although I know I have a hood, I have to sew still, but I'm just kind of putting that off right now because it's fur too. Or just so messy. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll drop links in the description below of where I got materials. Um, I think all the material, except for this flannel, came from the same place. So yeah, there's links everywhere and links to the rest of this video series. Thank you so much for watching. So this is later after I recorded everything else. Um, I did go ahead and switch out my two snaps at the bottom for utility snaps. They are stronger than the sew-on snaps just because I was coming in, uh, running into this continuing to unsnap at the bottom. Um, these I was able to just install as normal, but because I didn't want um, the shiny backs of these caps to show on the fur on the front side because it's the piece that goes over top of this piece. 
Um, I just attached it to a separate piece of flannel and then hand sewed the flannel on. So I have tested them and they do line up better. And now um, also where I was getting that weird fold towards the bottom, it was actually because on the sew on snap, I had it sitting like right here instead of right here. So it actually had, was pulling up the fabric a little bit and I didn't realize that before. So I made that adjustment as well. So overall it's pretty much the same, but the snaps are going to stay snapped and rock on that one little tiny fold happening over here. So yeah, just a quick little update at the end of this.